Hi, I'm Luann Hammond, DrivingTheNation.com. I am here with Dave Tuhig. He is the Chief Vehicle Engineer for Byton. Welcome to Pebble Beach. So, here we are again at Pebble Beach, and this is what we are seeing. Another, not only an electric vehicle, but an autonomous concept car. Absolutely. First off, let's just start with the name, Byton. Why Byton? Well, Bites on Wheels. Bites on Wheels. And the, the rationale behind that is, Actually, this isn't a vehicle. We don't consider this an electric vehicle. This is a smart device on wheels, okay? Yes, K-bytes, um, kilobytes. Exactly. Yes. And up to 2006, right, we all thought we wanted a telephone to make telephone calls. And then in 2007, this came along. Yes. And this changed the game. And we think this vehicle as well, and the generation of vehicles to come, are going to change the game. They're no longer just vehicles. They genuinely are the new generation smart devices on wheels. In fact, anyone who has an iPhone that's uh, a lot younger is going, why not electric? It's simple. It exactly. makes sense to it's us. Obvious, yeah. I mean, there's still techno technological challenges, but you're getting there. Absolutely. So on this autonomous concept, you actually have a LiDAR, which I would say looks something about the same size as the one from Israel, and there's another one here in the United States. But what's wonderful about this is that it's retractable. Absolutely. And so it, this tells me it can be in autonomous mode or not. So when it's in autonomous mode, this comes out. But if we go on the other side, you can see that it is not in autonomous mode and it has already been retracted. Exactly. And this stays out because this is a camera for your uh, side mirror. You got it. Which means that this would be in the monitor that if you look behind me, it would, the actual camera would be somewhere inside here, yeah. on the left and the right yeah. side. And again, this is a concept. We're talking about level four autonomy vehicles. Now, these are mm -hmm. vehicles that can drive themselves most of the time in most conditions. So this is really looking forward in a, a few years' time at what are these sensors going to look like. And as you rightly pointed out, these are the LiDAR sensors. This is a laser radar that are available in 2018. Right. Um, they're going to get smaller, they're going to get cheaper, but we wanted to do an engineering and design exercise to say, okay, what does this do to the design language of the car? Because what, we can either hide them and try and hide them somewhere in the bodywork of the car, or we can celebrate the technology. And we've decided at Byton, let's put it out there, it's cool. And with this idea of having a retract, retractable sensor, now which gives us plenty technical challenges, let me tell you, um, but we think it's pretty cool and we wanted to put it out there to see how people react to it. You're right, the car is going to be built in a factory in China, in Nanjing in, in China, but it's a global brand. We're going to be launching in China, North America and Europe, and it's also a global team. Uh, the car has been designed in Germany. Most of the engineering is here in California, in Silicon Valley, but we also have teams based in China. So we genuinely are a global brand, global country, but with an industrial base in China. If you are headquartered in China and you are manufacturing in China, you are going to have to be uh, importing them from China. Absolutely. You've got some challenges in this current administration with all the tariffs coming on. I know that the uh, current car that you're going to be selling is priced around $45,000 US, and that will be starting in 2020. Mid-20 in the US, absolutely. End of 2019 in China. So I'm sure that you guys are already looking at all of this. How is that going to play for you? Yeah, it's a challenge. So the situation, everybody knows the current tensions, let's say. This is a very fast moving subject. Um, we're obviously watching this and following the situation, but we believe it's very, very fluid. A lot of things are gonna change between now and mid 2020. So we're monitoring it. We do have contingency plans that we can deploy if we need to, um, but we're optimistic. You also have state regulations and federal regulations that require you to have dealerships, etc. How are you going to be selling in the United States? So our model is mostly direct sales, which means internet selling, um, with some brand stores in key locations uh, and working with partners to, uh, to tackle those challenges. And again, some other car makers have to some extent paved the way. We know it's difficult. We know there are challenges state by state. We believe it can be done, and we're already studying that, ready for a 2020 launch. There are still some uh, car, car makers in America, in the United States, that uh, are not as far along on the electric spectrum as you are. Would you 
possibly be open to being in a partnership with them? <laughs> That's a great question. At the moment, we're 100% concentrated on delivering our vehicle. Now, we're a very open company. We're talking to the best technology partners in the world, the best suppliers, the best um, technology leads. So we're open to discuss with everyone, but at the moment, we're concentrated on delivering our own vehicle. We will see it coming in, just in less than two years. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you.